Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Summer is coming and of course we all want these beautiful shots. So today I'm going to show you how to fix an overexposed image to get really beautiful results with a lot of secret sauce. Let's get started. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, my weekly challenge is up again. This time I task you to follow this tutorial post your entry under the challenge and I'm going to review it in my live stream in the upcoming Sunday. And of course, you should absolutely join that because I'm doing some live editing. You can ask me any kind of questions and I'm going to have a lot of fun as always. So let's get started with this tutorial. And first of all, you can see here, it's pretty overexposed, so we need to fix that first. For this, I'm using an adjustment layer for curves. This one, as you can see here, curves. Let's create that. And you can see down here, we have a histogram in the background. You can see here, these values have nothing in it. So I'm going to grab this point and move it over to the side. So you can see when you look here in the shadow areas, let's zoom in here a little bit more. You can see in the shadow areas that these are getting more detailed and basically getting fixed. Now, over to the right side, we have the bright values and on the left side, we have the darker values. So that means when I have this line here and I drag it down, I can look at the different values in my image to see what is going on. So let's focus on this stone here with our attention. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to drag down these areas here and see, I'm just focusing on the stone and I'm dragging it down until I'm happy with the values I'm seeing here. Now I can zoom out a little bit more and then we have these mid values here in the area where the water is. So also let's drag this down a little bit and then we have up here the sky values. So let's drag this also down a little bit, maybe a little bit over to the right side and you can see just like that we're getting some interesting values. Now let's compare the other values. This is looking a little bit strange. So let's pull these values down here a little bit more. And just like that, you can see that already we have a much more interesting looking picture. Of course, right now the image is a little bit dark and it doesn't look very warm or sunny or nice in any way. So the next step I want to do here is to actually introduce a little bit of saturation. So let's do that. Let's go down here to adjustments again. And then we have one here that is called Vibrance. So in here we have our Vibrance and saturation settings. So let's push up the saturation a little bit and then also the vibrance a little bit. Again, the image is still dark. Don't worry too much about that. We're going to fix that in a second. Just push this up to a value where you feel like, okay, here in the stone and down in the water, it looks pretty interesting. It looks pretty good. Now, when we zoom into the image, we can see something else. It looks nice, but I'm kind of missing smaller, finer contrast and a bit more details, maybe also a bit more sharpness. And also down here in the water, everything is a little bit smudgy, a little bit blurry. Now, of course, this is up to taste. So you set this up in any way that you prefer, but I want to see a bit more detail here. So for that, I'm going to go to live filters and I'm going to use clarity for that. And there we have our live clarity. I will push this up. In this case, I'm going to go with 100%. But when you look closely, what you can see here, I'm getting some bending up here. That doesn't look good. And also, I don't need that much clarity, that much detail up in the sky. So what I'm doing here is I'm going over to my brush, select that, and then I'm setting it to black as the main color. I can actually reduce the opacity a little bit. Let's go here with 50% for that, like so. And then let's paint here on the background. Actually, you know what? I'm going to hold Control and Alt, move my mouse to the left while pressing the left mouse button to make this 
uh, brush a little bit smaller like so. Also, when you look up here, my hardness is set to 34%, so it's pretty soft hardness around there. And now I'm just going to paint over these areas here where I think I don't want to have too much clarity in the sky. So you can see those are getting a little bit softer, maybe also for these upper clouds here, so the sky is staying nice and soft and like that. We have fixed most of that bending that stems from the clarity. As a next step, what I want to do is to also introduce a little bit of sharpness. I'm going to do that down here again with the live filter for unsharp mask. Click on that. It's applied as a child filter. If you don't want that to happen, there's an easy fix to that. Up here you have for something called the assistant manager. When you click on that, it's opening up and you can see down here when you're adding a filter layer, it is automatically added as a child layer. So I can click on this and say, I want to have it added as a new layer instead. And then afterwards I can decide if this should be a child layer or not. So if you do that now, every new filter layer is becoming a new layer instead of a child layer. So that's the easy fix here. And then let's set this radius up. Um, let's say to 0 0.8 pixels, factor 0 0.5 threshold can stay as it is. Um, again, it's as a child layer right here. So let's click and drag this up here. And you can see when I turn this on and off, it gives me a little bit more details here, a little bit more sharpness in these areas. And I'm happy with this. Now here comes some massive secret sauce. And that is I'm going to use another curve adjustment on top of everything, but I'm going to set it RGB to lab mode instead down here. And then I'm going to B opponent, which is the pink line. And what I want to do here, when you look at the picture, you can see we have darker values that are the sky and the sea, and then we have brighter values, which is mostly the landscape. And I want the sea to be a little bit cooler to have more blue values. And then I want the land to be a little bit warmer to have more orange values in there. So I will drag this down here and you can see my C is getting bluer. Don't overdo it because it's getting into kind of a very cool color. So just a tiny bit and then move this side up and you can see just like that, my stones are getting warmer from the light and my C is getting cooler from the light. And also what this helps us to do is to introduce a little bit of color contrast between these different areas so that they are standing out because they have their own space now in which they exist. And here is now the super secret sauce on how to make this look even better. Let's zoom out here a little bit so we see the whole picture. And now look at that. I'm going to go to live filters and I'm going to use lighten, which is one of the last two lighting. Actually, it's called lighting. So let's click on that. It's opening up and it looks like that. Well, what are we going to do with that? Well, I'm going to tell you, we are going to switch over here the type from spot to directional. This is going to give us a directional light that doesn't have any kind of specific source. It's just coming from one direction. This is what that means, but it's over all of the picture and it doesn't have any kind of specific cone or shape. It's just a light uniform and parallel, right? So here we have our direction and also the distance on this to this point, from this point to this point is defining on what angle it is hitting onto our image. So we can define by that also a little bit how bright it's going to be. You see, this is also the same I do here with the direction, but with the huge benefit that here I have a further, a bigger path I can move with my mouse and that makes it easier to adjust. Now, when you think about light, it consists basically in our Earth, on our planet, from two different colors. 
One is blue, which is the sky, usually through the daylight. And then we have yellow, which is from the sun, right? The sunlight is a little bit yellow and the sky is a little bit blue. So they are mixing. So that means for us, when we set up the lights over here, you can see we have ambient light and then we have also directional light with a color to it. So that means when I go here for my ambient light, I want to set the ambient light color to a light blue. Let's do this real quick. Um, let's see, let's go like this, maybe a little bit of a very light sky blue. Let's reduce the ambient light color. Let's go here with around 8%, very light. And then I'm going to go over here to my light color and I'm setting this up with a nice yellow, very light yellow at first, like so, okay. And then over here, you can see I have copy and this makes a duplicate of the light I already have. So it gives me two lights basically. So let's click on that. And now I have a second light. Now, of course, this is too bright. So let's go in here to the light color again. And of course, the darker the light tone is, the less light is falling on there because the darker the light is going to be, right? So let's push this down here a little bit. Let's push it a little bit more into orange like so. And then let's see, let's play around with this to make this nice and dark like so. Okay, it's a good starting point. Let's play around here with the values a little bit more. Let's see. Yes, okay, moving this back a little bit. You see a little bit more distant, so less light is falling onto that. And this is kind of a real light simulation. It doesn't take into account the 3D shapes, so there's no there's no shadows applied to that, but it's applying a simulated light onto the scene. So now as a last step, let's refine this a little bit. First of all, I'm going to select my lighting adjustment, go here to the little cogwheel, click on that. This will open up my blend ranges and here I'm going to click for the underlying composition ranges in the middle and then drag the right side down a little bit because this will limit the amount of lighting effect that is going into the sky here. So it's not going to be too yellow up there. You can also pull it down further if you want to. This is up to taste. And I'm going to go down here to my first curve adjustment where we set up basically the brightness of our image and the contrast. So let's pull these values down a little bit. Let's see, let's go like this over here. And then over here, let's pull this also a little bit down. So we get a little bit more contrast. Again, this is up to taste but I feel like so is pretty beautiful. That's it for today. If you liked it, please leave a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like that, subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell button. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye. Bye.